uh, sometimes the Lord used allegory, sometimes the Lord used uh, metaphor, and sometimes uh, even simile. You guys heard of simile, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, comparison, analogy. All right. Uh, before I go there, let me defend the Bible real quick. Because uh, a lot of critics, you know, they like to tear the Bible apart. And uh, they like to take out or add, you know. Yeah. That's not right. What the Lord put together, you know, that's the Lord, you know. The Lord had placed it together for the purpose, for his children. Um, the Bible was put together by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can also say that the Bible was inspired by the power of the Holy Spirit. God the Father had prepared the Bible for his uh, for his people, including the Jewish and the Gentile Christians. For his people to study of the mysteries, search uh, for the truth, and walk accordingly. We are not supposed to add or subtract um, anything from it, from God's word. Critics could do all of the relaxation uh, criticism uh, they want. But at the end, they will, uh, they will have to face the, the judgment of the Lord Jesus. Relaxation, that just means to take out or to put together or whatever, tear down. The Bible is infallible and it is inerrant. That means uh, free from uh, mistake. And it is perfect. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, All scriptures is given by inspiration of God, and it is prof profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thorough, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You guys have encountered this uh, Bible verse before, right? All right, before we go there, um, only, one, only one parable that the Lord explained to, uh, to us, okay? The rest of the parable, you have to, um, you have, if you want, especially teacher and preacher, I, the one that never been to school, you know, you know only, okay, the teachers and the preachers that never been to school, they're gonna know only the literal sense literal sense on that side, as, as is, as it was written. They know only the literal sense. But if you um, see a preacher, and uh, most preachers, before they preach, they, they read the Bible verse, the passage over and over until it becomes part of them. And they, uh, they think of it. They, uh, everywhere they go, they think of that, that Bible verse until God gives them more wisdom, more knowledge and wisdom. So they, uh, you know, they have things more uh, extracting the truth so they could uh, preach and teach the people. All right, let me see. Mark chapter 4, verse 9 to 13, if you want to turn to it. This is the platform that uh, we use. Uh, what the Lord say before we get to the uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 26 to 29. The professor, uh, you know, uh, given us uh, each parable, and we had to live with it for the whole semester. Oh, uh, I'll tell you. Not, not this one. Not the one on the board. Mark chapter 4, verses 9 to 13. Could somebody read it, please? Then Jesus said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. When he was alone, the twelve and the others around him asked him about the parables. He told them, The secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you. But to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, and ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? Yes, 
that's it. Okay, this is the only one. You remember the four seeds, right? The four seeds? This parable? And that's what the Lord saying. The Lord explained to them what it means. But other parables, you really have to, you know, pray to the Lord. Uh, you know, basically um, pray to Him, ask Him for knowledge and wisdom. Meditate on the words. The Bible says meditate. Uh, meditate. All right, now we're going to go uh, to Mark chapter uh, 4, verses 26 to 29. The title of this uh, passage called The Secret uh, Growing Seed. The Se Secret Growing Seed. This passage here, let me uh, tell you, you know, uh, telling of the future. Uh, you can do, uh, you can also, uh, there's two ways to teach or preach. Uh, it has two... Most parables have two levels of meanings, okay? Literal meaning and spiritual meaning. Some people uh, say in the spiritual sense, they uh, say uh, allegory or uh, metaphor or simile or, you know, whatever, uh, comparison or whatever they... But um, it all, uh, each parable is unique. It offers, its, you know, it has its own identity. It has its own... And also, if you don't understand the parable, you know, you can also, uh, you can also read the commentary. You, you guys heard of a, of a read the commentary of the Bible verse or the passage or something? You can read it, but if you are uh, truly a, a God's son, he will bless you with knowledge and wisdom. And you can see also uh, how those people, if they are wrong, if they are right, if they like, you know, partly right or wrong or something, but, you know, you use what the Lord, you know, give you. All right. And he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man uh, should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by, de and rise by day. The seed should sprout, sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. For the earth uh, gives crops by itself. First the blade, then the head, after that the grain in the head. But when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. All right, I'm going to break it down, phrase by phrase for you, okay? All right, in the literal sense, um, you, uh, the teacher or the preacher can teach um, um, in the literal aspect, one can uh, could teach or preach of the natural man, the farmer, of his hard work and patience in order for the seed to grow and bear fruits for him. But in the spiritual sense, it's going to be like this. Um, all right, first going to be uh, the Lord Jesus. It's going to shift back and forth. And man. Man here, we go to apostle. First apostle. And then disciple. Which is us, you know, today Christian, right? back to the Lord.
All right. The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. That's verse 26, right? Mm -hmm. All right. The kingdom of God is uh, clearly seen in the works of the Lord Jesus, even though the kingdom is not in plain view. The kingdom of God has been uh, starting with Jesus and his ministries. The Lord Jesus was the sower. He had sown the seed himself for three years, first among the Jews and then among the Gentiles. Could somebody turn to uh, John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5? And uh, somebody want to volunteer to read that? Okay, go for it. In the beginning, the Word already existed. The Word was the Word of God, and the Word was God. He existed in the beginning of the Word of God. God created everything through Him. Nothing was created except through Him. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and has in His light brought light to, light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. Okay, and then Mark chapter 1 verse 15. I'll read that since I, I already turned up, turned to it. Mark chapter 1 verse what? Verse 15. And the Lord Jesus saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Because he was with the people. That's why he said he was at, you know, the kingdom is already here. All right. Now we're going to the next, the next phrase. And should sleep by night and rise by day. All right. We, um, now, I'm, I'm just going to read from Mark uh, chapter 10, verse 45. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many, okay? The, the Lord Jesus had said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. You see that, uh, that, that, that phrase right there? Sleep by night, and, by night and ride by day, referring to his uh, death and resurrection. You see it? The Lord had already planted and it grows accordingly. And now we go into the next phrase. And the seed should sprout and grow. Verse 27. After the Lord's resurrection, he had entrusted his ministry toward man, his apostles, his disciples, us Christians. And uh, the seeds are still being sown by man, by us. He himself does not know how. This is uh, referring to us, to man. We don't know the capacity of the, the growth, of Christian growth. We don't know the, the number of, uh, you know, the percentage. We don't know. The Lord, the one who works behind the scenes. We men do not know how the seed grows, but it grows. God gives the kingdom, the kingdom grow, the kingdom grows in ways that beyond the human understanding. For the earth yield crop, yield, yields crops by itself. From then until now, his kingdom is still in the, the present stages of growth and still continues to grow. For his kingdom grows automatically, with us or without us, with man or without man. His kingdom still growing. Uh, automate, the Greek word, it means uh, self-acting. You, you remember Peter, P Peter's story? The gate opened by itself for him to get out. Yeah, self-acting. And another author said, uh, you know, he has a smart thing to say. He said, things that happen without a visible cause. That means God working behind the scenes, right? God doing uh, things behind the scenes. That's by Donald. All right.
right now we're going to the next phrase. Now let's get about it. Starting with the Lord Jesus, he has allowed us man to work alongside with him to the end of the age. Thank be to the Lord that we have parts in play, uh, parts to play in building his kingdom. According to Apostle Paul, I planted Apollo's water, but God gave the increase. So then, neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 6 to 7. All right, the first, uh, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. What does this phrase refer to? It refers to uh, Christian growing in stages, right? We growing in stages. The seed grows in stages. So do Christians. You know, baby stage, adolescent, teen, young adult. All right, now we come to the last, uh, the last phrase, the last. Uh, but when the grain ripens, immediately he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. Verse twenty-nine. All right. Now we shift. Uh, now it's shifting to the Lord. Okay, the Lord Jesus is going to do the reaping. The he here is uh, shifting back to the Lord Jesus. The words ripen, sickle, and harvest are referring to the final judgment. That's in the near future. It is not a good it is not a good news for the unrighteous, but it is a great news for God's people. For the judgment belongs to the Lord. We can uh, we can say the Lord's prayer with confidence. That's what we are looking for, right? The day become more evil each, you know, increasing in evil, increasing in wickedness. We can say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And then give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. According to Joel chapter 3, verse 13, Put the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, go down, for the winepress is full, the vats overflow, for wickedness is great. Then in James uh, chapter 5, verses 7 to 8, Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the, the coming, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for, for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Uh, one author, his name is Franz, he summed it up this way. Quote, The kingdom will continue to grow inexorably, though sometimes almost invisibly, and that, at the end of the age, the kingdom will have grown into all its fullness, after which judgment day will, be, will immediately follow. Is that what we all looking for? God's children looking for the, that day? Even though, even the day of the apostle, you know, apostle said that the day was near, but it's not as near as we are now. I think we are into the beginning of the end right now. And a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of Christians are thinking the same way. All right. The whole universe is the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is all also in each and every one of us who are his, or who are truly born again in Christ. And in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, Apostle Paul said, Do you not know that you are the temple of God, 
and the spirit the spirit of God dwells in you. For he was and is the creator of all things. Therefore all things belong to him. In Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 4, this is what the Lord said. Behold, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son is mine. The soul, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. He will definitely gather his people to himself. Therefore, are you part of the kingdom? Are you growing with the kingdom? If you are not, would you like to join the kingdom in, of Christ? You guys have any questions? Understand parable a little bit more than yeah. before? Yeah. Has two two meanings, okay? And uh, if you want to teach or preach from parable, you need to ask the Lord for knowledge and wisdom. The Lord, if you are truly His, He will open your eyes to see it. Like phrase by phrase, verse by verse, or passage by passage. Um, each story, you know, has a literal sense and spiritual sense. And uh, this is just uh, one level of parable. There's a uh, three point, two points parable, three points parable, three uh, points are uh, complex parable. You know, there a lot more. But thank, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for you have anything before. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.